Boom. Oh. oh. There it is. Oh, Ooh. man. Good sight. Freak. Hey, what's happening out there, good people? In today's video, we are going to go over a spoiler-free review of The Quarry, a game that I have sunk 30 hours into, having seen most of the endings and having a good grasp of the content in this cinematic thriller. I won't be going in depth with this review of the game, as so much of it would lead to spoilery discussions, and I simply don't want to ruin the experience for those who have yet to play it. I instead want to focus on this game's strengths and weaknesses. As an FYI, the gameplay shown in this video was captured from my PS5 version of the game and only features the first three chapters of the game. All the footage shown does not reveal anything pertaining to or relating to spoilers, as I want to show off this game's gameplay and mechanics so that you can get a better understanding of how this game plays. Before we get into the review, I just want to say that I had a great time with this game and I highly recommend picking it up if you are a fan of Until Dawn or other games made by Supermassive Games, Telltale Games, or other games of a similar vein where narrative-driven choose-your-own-adventure structures with multiple varying paths are the main component. There are some grapes I have with the game, but I'll get into those near the end of the video. So without further ado, let's jump in! In a previous video, I mentioned that The Quarry was going to be this summer's biggest game. Seeing as Until Dawn was incredibly popular when it came out in 2015, I figured a true spiritual successor of that game would prove to be equally, if not more popular. Turns out that this game did indeed generate a bit of buzz, but without its soon-to-come online multiplayer mode, it just didn't generate quite the buzz we were expecting. I'll be making a video about its multiplayer component when the mode goes live, but regardless, this game still offers some fantastic couch co-op and atmospheric storytelling to satiate those craving for more of what Until Dawn did so well. The Quarry is set in upstate New York at a fictional campground where our playable characters of the story reprise of camp counselors in their late teens. At their final night of camp, after the children have gone home, these teenagers expect to finish off their camp season with one grand celebration before packing their bags to end the summer. But all manner of danger and misfortune collide, resulting in a very deadly night. Hey! Cool your jets there, cowboy. The game is set up where every scene focuses on one of the over half dozen teenagers as you walk around, interacting with fellow counselors in the environment, trying to piece together a means to get out of the horror that has beset them. Immediately when starting up the game, I loved how great this game looks. Facial animations are crisp and realistic, with accurate and convincing profiling done to make it seem as though you were actually watching a movie. The way the lighting creates shadows on surfaces, particularly characters' faces, does a very convincing job of throwing you right into the drama. The actors do an amazing job of being playful when needed, and also showing a lot of fear and vulnerability when things go south. It was, it was so dark, and it happened so fast, and they were gone. They? Ma'am, did you hit someone? No! Job very well done here. The player is able to walk around in the environments, pan the camera around to better observe their surroundings, and interact with items in each of the game's varied locations. Without giving away spoilers here regarding the locations, you are centralized at the campgrounds and its immediate surroundings, so expect to explore the main lodge, the cabins, campfire pits, and more. At times, the camera will suddenly transition to a fixed camera angle, which can be jarring, but doesn't disrupt the flow too greatly. These transitions highlight a key item or view of the background, and points you to where the game wants you to focus. Such camera pivots relate to the tarot cards that can be picked up while exploring. These special collectibles act as important glimpses into the future that are to be redeemed when at the end of a chapter, while talking to this particularly mysterious woman. She serves as a person who you interact with between each chapter, often reflecting on the decisions you've made in the game thus far, and also gives you the option to get a glimpse into the future of a particular outcome that is represented by the tarot cards you collect. Beware that you can only look at one tarot card per interaction with the lady between chapters, meaning that if you were to collect two tarot cards in a particular chapter, you can only reveal the effects of one tarot card. 
These brief glimpses of the future come in the form of a second or two long video depicting some sort of danger befalling your fellow counselors. Other items include clues that can help you piece together the mysteries that occur throughout the night, evidence, which pertains to suspicious documents that give you a better understanding of the situation around you, and items that give you more insight into the history of the campgrounds further fleshing out the setting and its lore. I particularly liked that the collectibles did a good job of meaningfully setting up the events of the story and gave context to what was going on, giving players the option to read full transcripts of notes and letters scattered about the game world. Another aspect I greatly enjoyed was the inclusion of much better quick time events compared to Until Dawn and other games like this. The QTEs are done very well here and are actually quite minimal, as all you need to do is hold the joystick in the way the game wants you to hold and position it to successfully complete the action. The only face button you need to press is X on PlayStation or A on Xbox, and there are several times when you are armed with a weapon and need to aim and fire it. Nice shot. During these simple QTEs, the time does slow down, giving you ample time to successfully execute. But the choice is up to you if you want to pass or fail these, as passing these QTEs leads to a very different outcome than failing them. Also returning are the don't breathe moments of Until Dawn, where you need to hold your breath and stop moving to try to get out of danger. In the quarry, all you need to do is hold down the button on the screen and keep it held down until the red borders disappear. All in all, great improvements with the QTEs. High five up top. Another great aspect worth mentioning are the accessibility features. Along with being able to configure settings related to subtitles, vibration, controller setups, etc., there are a myriad of tweaks to the game that you can make to make the QTEs more involved or easier for gamers who want a more relaxed experience. Also added is the movie mode where you assign character traits to each of the characters and the game essentially plays itself with no input required on your part. Job very well done here. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. Pop, pop, pop them in your mouth. Pop. Now, before we get into what I didn't quite like about the quarry, I'd like to invite you to slash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. I make reviews, previews, and tips and tricks content on this channel quite regularly, and if that is something that interests you, I'd love to have you stick around for the ride. Now, finally, I'd like to touch up on the game's shortcomings. I'm not going to knock the game due to not having their multiplayer available on day one, as that was simply out of the developer's control. I will instead address criticism about the endings to the game. Again, no spoilers here whatsoever, but don't expect much deviation in outcomes based on getting an outcome where some people died versus all people survive or all people die. All endings unfortunately are very similar, leaving me feeling like the effort taken to reach each particular ending was quite underwhelming. The game can absolutely be taken to new and unseen directions during the meat of the story, but at the end of the game, it's as if the game just funnels you through a very specific funnel and spits out most of the ingredients that comprise each of the game's endings, resulting in a game with endings that are far too similar than it needs to be. It was clearly rushed here, and just a little bit of added exposition surrounding the events after the story ends could have benefited the game so much more. Other than that, I think The Quarry is a fantastic game that really sinks its teeth into you. The story starts off slowly, but quickly ratchets up the intensity after the second hour mark, and the story can take you to some truly surprising places. I just wish the endings did more to reward those who played it more than once to see its different endings. But what about you? Are you interested in The Quarry? Have you played it before? What did or didn't you like about the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll be putting out a video when the online multiplayer mode releases, so stay tuned for some more The Quarry content in the future. Thanks again for your support, and I look forward to seeing all you good people in the next video. Peace!